Praise the Lord. Amen. This thing's sliding all over. I got a new, I got a new thing, and it's sliding. Give me a book or something. I got, y'all see what I got back, right? Remember, it got stolen in Brussels, but it's all back now. Amen. Uh, give me a towel. Give me something. Just set it right there on the bottom. On the bottom. There we go. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Don't worry. I'm gonna get this kink worked out here. So there's a movie out right now called Unplanned, and I'm not gonna talk about abortion today, but I'm gonna talk about seasons of your life. And I'm not. I'm a rah rah guy, and I'll do that on the field later. Amen. But today I want to teach, and I want you to understand, I want you to listen, because I really believe, I, I, really, I really believe as a ministry and as a people, we're at, there's a crossroads, and I really ask God, so, you know, we're at, a cro- we're at this crossroads, so what happens at a crossroad? I'm going to try to explain something to you today. Everybody say, there's different seasons, different seasons. and then seasons change. Y'all believe that? I believe it because two months ago there was no leaves on the tree, and now there's leaves on the tree, right? All right? So seasons are still changing. Two months ago it was 28 degrees, today it's going to be 80. You with me? All right? So everybody agrees that no matter what you're going through, no matter where you've been or what, what's pressing you today, that you're going to come to a crossroads where you can either submit to it or you can get through it. Come on. Right? So I want to read Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Everybody knows this. The, the birds made a song out of it, I think. The, any of you young people don't know, you go look at uh, the birds, right? <laughs> Amen. B-Y-R-D-S. There's a season change, 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 right? To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Everybody, let's read it together. Say, to everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So wouldn't we all agree that there are times in our life, how many of y'all like, how many of you know we run through life like, like, you know, man, like, like we're, we're just running through it. I mean, we're, I, I don't want to use the words I used to use because somebody told me they, they, they weren't good. So, but we run through life like mad men, like the Tasmanian devil sometimes, right? Y'all remember that, the cartoons? Well, do you remember the Tasmanian devil, right? We run through it like a whirlwind. There's times in our life when our momentum comes to a screeching halt. Can I hear an amen? amen? You're running hard for the Lord. You're running hard in your marriage. You're running hard on your job. You're running hard in your relationship. You're running hard with your buddies and your friends. You're running hard in the church. And all of a sudden, it stopped. Some of you are on that point right now. I've been there many times. And what happens is a season ends. If you live in Georgia, a season will end and catch you by surprise. One day, I, one day we went up the mountain, and we were in shorts and t-shirts. The next week, it was like, I thought it was snowing up there, right? Doug thought it was snowing, amen, because he slid down the mountain, right? But, but, but a season in, it catches you by surprise sometimes. Say amen. amen. Running hard, man, running hard at my job. I'm running hard at pastoring, running hard at being a husband, running hard at being a daddy, and all of a sudden, it changes. It, 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 the season changes. And it catches you by surprise. And what happens is you're left wondering what happened. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all have been left wondering what has happened. I ain't doing this no more. I used to do that. And, and you're wallowing in, in, in yesterday's promises instead of walking in today's promises. Amen. I wrote this message after I watched Aubrey Gordon speak at Relay to Life as honorary chairman, chat, whatever she was. She was honorary speaker. To me, she was the only speaker. To me, she was the only survivor that, I'm not, don't, don't get mad, but for me that night, it was her. I wrote this last night thinking about seasons and about how, how many seasons she had seen change in her life and how many times, this ain't about Aubrey, this is about the Lord and about you, but how many seasons, and every time she came, I got, this is so good, God, the Holy Ghost is good, he knows her well, by the way, I'm just going to tell you. Every time she came to a crossroad in her life, amen, something had to happen. I'm going to talk to you about that today. So when a season in and catches you by surprise and you're left wondering, I, 
I don't know about y'all, but I've had seasons like that happen in my life. I was a senior pastor at a Baptist church down in Walnut Grove, Georgia. I passed it yesterday going to the funeral home. And, and, and I was well taken care of. You know, I could preach like no tomorrow. You know, I, lo- you know, I thought it was the greatest thing since I... But all of a sudden, it started coming to a screeching halt. Amen. And I didn't know what I was going... And I was like, what, what, God, what, what do I do next? What do I do, God, now in my life? I don't know what's happened, but something has came to a screeching halt in my life, and I don't know where to go. I don't know where... I know I'm supposed to preach. I don't know where I'm going to preach at. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't know. I really don't even know. But you know what? I made a decision. I, I, I said, what do I do next? Right? And, and, you know, and it could be anything in your life... You know, how many of you have ever lost a job in your life? You weren't expecting to lose a job, but you lost it. It could be a promotion. Maybe you didn't get the promotion you thought you were going to get. Or maybe a new position of leadership even in the church, right? Amen. Maybe you thought you should have gotten something you didn't get, right? But it, it, and, and it could be maybe a completion of a task, right? Or moving into a new home, anything. Any of those things become transitions in your life. And, you got, and, and sometimes you've got to start over. Some of y'all had marriages in. Before that, next, before that next marriage, there's going to be a battlefield, right? Amen? And there's going to be, there's going to be challenges that come because it's a new season of your life. You can be cons- I, I see people, men, women, everybody, that are consumed with their past season, amen, instead of going through the battlefield, going through the battlefield and enforcing the victory and going through to the next season, right? All right? Listen to me. I'm going to explain to you. You know, so, and, and, you know, and I, I've just experienced this. You know, I, I, live in a, I live in my house now where I used to have three children every single day that would say, Daddy's home, you know. So I, I had to go through a, tra- we had to go through a transition in our own family like some of y'all are doing right now. And, and you can either be, some parents never get over their children moving out. Some of y'all don't ever let your ch- children move out. Come on, somebody. Amen. You, you should encourage your children to, to embrace their season. Amen. Amen. And, and do, you, do I like it? Do I like it when Tyler got on that bus to go to uh, basic training in 2010? I did not like it, amen? It was very uncomfortable. It was a new season in my life, and, and it was a crossroads for me and my wife. Sometimes you pass these tests. Sometimes you fail it. I'm going to be honest with you. Me, I failed it. I didn't deal with not going to baseball games. I didn't deal with not having my kids home every day. I didn't deal with it in the best way that I could. It felt like something was missing. Come on, somebody. Amen. And all of a sudden, Tyler's not at home. And then all of a sudden, Garrett ain't at home. And then all of a sudden, my daughter ain't at home no more. Come on, somebody. Seasons change. Man, if you don't know who your family, your wife is, you don't know who your relationship with God is, I will tell you, a marriage cannot withstand that. A marriage, and you cannot withstand anything that takes you to that crossroads if you don't have the Holy Spirit and are able to do it. How many of y'all have had challenges in your life where something hit you blindsided, you didn't see it coming, amen? And I'm going to tell you, so many people, amen, give up on God during that season. That's when you got to enforce about. The enemy knows. He sees it when you're coming to an intersection of your life. He knows you're about to have a, a car wreck, and he is like the, the he's like those strong-arm attorneys. He's waiting at the wreck site. He's waiting at the hospital. He Come on, go, go ahead and get mad, amen? I challenge you, right? You ain't got no dominion over me. I'm going, to keep it in, I'm going to keep it right here. But he sees you at the crossroads. He visits you at the hospital. He visits you when your wife's... Come on, go ahead, go ahead. He sees you, amen, when you and your wife are fighting and one of them's moving out. He, and, and, you know what? And he's trying to egg it on to see how far he can push you out of it. What you've got to do during those seasons of your life, you've got to draw a line in the sand and say, I will not be defined by this moment. Right? You start getting feeling anxious. You start getting disoriented. You start taking it out on your wife. You take it out on your... You know what? People don't even show up for church. Amen. They take it out on their pastor when things are not going right in their life. Really, it's just God's trying to take them to a new season, into a new season in their life. And, and the enemies don't talk to you out of even coming to church here anymore. Y'all be ashamed. Ain't nothing but one of them two-trick pony attorneys. Amen. Come on, somebody. Trying to talk you out of your, your, your he, listen. You already got uh, you already got power of attorney to use the name of Jesus. You don't need an attorney at the crossroad. <laughs> you don't need a strong arm. <laughs> you know, you know. And I'm gonna tell you, the enemy comes, and I'm not. This ain't about the enemy. I'm trying to help somebody. 
He comes at the most disoriented time, the most lax time, the weakest moment you're at, and he tries to get That's what these attorneys do. I didn't even know I was going this way. That's what the attorneys do. When you land in the hospital, you're just trying to get well, hoping you're going to live. They in there trying to get you to sue somebody. i throw them out of the room so quick you'd see stars. What happens is, because you're unstable, because you're disoriented, because you're feeling anxious, why do you think the devil tried to tempt Jesus at his weakest point? Je oh, my God, I don't even want to get started. Because I'm building a new series that's going to be so good. Everybody say, you ain't done a new series. Good wine takes time. I don't, I don't work on y'all's schedule. Just understand, okay? I don't even work on my schedule. God works on his time. Come on, somebody. So I'm building stuff. But what happened is he's seen that Jesus, when Jesus got filled with the Holy Ghost, that crossroad happened. Oh, my God, that's so good. A crossroad that happened in his life that something was about to change. Amen. So guess who met him right there? The devil did. Amen. Whatever you're going through will either consume you or it will carry you. Oh, man. It will carry you to the next season. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. This is going to be the best message I've ever preached. God told me so. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, like wine, I'm getting there, I'm letting it ferment. So what happens is, whether you're reaching your destiny or facing some kind of unexpected loss, you may not know how to carry on. You may not have it going. You may say, well, Bishop, the rah, rah ran out. God's just trying to change your season, amen. And you got to let it go, amen. You got to let yesterday go. What you did yesterday, oh, I was a teacher. Oh, I was this. Oh, I was a priest. Oh, don't mean you don't have to go back and do that. But God may be trying to transition you to a new level. Right. So you got to put your trust as long. How many of y'all, is everybody still breathing in here? As long as you're still breathing, Everybody say, God, God has, a plan has a plan for my next season. Ah, so good. Clap. God has a plan for my next season. So no matter what I'm going through, no matter where I've been, no matter where I'm going, he has a plan. So why should I worry? I'm going to take this off. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's path of faith is going to take us and take you where you can't even imagine. So... God was trying to take Jesus to a new path that he couldn't even imagine. Come on, somebody. Amen. God's trying to take you. So you're in the, un I, tell, I said this two years ago when some of y'all just got here. I'm going to make you as uncomfortable as possible, amen, so I can force you and push you into your next season. Amen. Some of y'all can't, don't like it. You want me to come pet you and protect? I got a dog at home. I'll pet the dog. I ain't petting you. God don't pet me. My God, God takes a stick out and gets, what, 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 it gets my attention, not in a bad way, don't get me wrong. But listen, his, God's path of faith is going to take me and you where we can't imagine. Wherever that is, I have no idea. But guess what? You're going to find that path in your crossroad. Everybody do crossroad. Come on, everybody. Hashtag that. Crossroad, right? Amen. But what happens is some paths are going to be simply amazing. Some paths are going to be the most, listen to me very carefully, let me go back. Some of the paths your life take are going to be amazing. You got a brand new grandbaby. I found out we're having G-Baby 2. Amazing. But there are other moments in the crossroads, in the season change, that are going to be the most disappointing and challenging time of your life that you've ever faced. Doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. It does not mean that you're not who you say you are. It don't mean any of that stuff. It just means you're going through a transition. Now every it ain't gonna be every day ain't hunky dory, right? But every day, every every day, every day, every day is not gonna be bad either, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? But follow everybody. Follow, that we, we that, I was listening to that song last Sunday. Ain't no gray. Following Jesus. How many y'all following Jesus? Yeah. Following Jesus means that I got to keep walking. Come on, somebody. That means I'm going to keep walking even when I don't know exactly where I'm walking to. Amen. I'm going to keep walking. I don't know where we're going, Bishop. I just keep walking. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Well, I don't understand. These other churches, they got all this. We're in the crossroads. 
It can either be amazing or it can be disappointing to you. It's your choice. I'm amazed and I'm disappointed at times in this very crossroad we're in. Well, I started a fast at midnight. Most people just don't take it seriously, but I got a team that's going, and I'm not going to talk a lot about that. But I had a team that fasted, and I said, I have a need. And I put that need out, and God met that need within five minutes. Something that would have took me four car washes, bye, 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 six months to do, happened in less than 20, listen, less than 20 minutes. Amen? You say, it was disappointing. It was disappointing because what we were going through, it seemed like it was a struggle. Not me personally, but us. And things weren't clicking until what happened. Two days into the fast, somebody is serious about this fast. Somebody got serious about this fast, and they decided this new season of mine was going to be a whole lot better than my last season, right? And we begin to see God move in everything, everything, everything that God, I mean, not only did everything happen, but God exceeded the expectation, right? So I want to talk to you something real quick. And I, know, I, I was going to bring some of this last week, but I thought I would do it again. I thought I would do it today. We don't talk a lot about it. I'm not talking about Joseph in the Old Testament. I'm talking about Joseph, the, the, the earthly father of Jesus, okay? You okay with that? I want to show you something. I'm going to use some words I had to look up because I forgot. The first time I ever did a wedding, <laughs> amen. I'm being honest. There's a word called betroth. And I remember they used it at my wedding, and I thought it was a hard word to say. I don't even know what it means. But it means a contract or you're engaged or something like that. So keep that in mind, right? So I began to think about Jesus, his earthly father, Joseph. So I want to help you. I want you to listen. Some months before... Um, before Jesus' birth, or some moments before they were to go and get married, Joseph had entered into, his family and Mary had entered into an agreed contract. He was going to get married to this young lady. Beautiful young lady. I, I picture he's a little older, kind of like me and my wife. Amen. Come on. Amen. He was all excited. Man, I'm gonna get. I got Mary. He's probably running around. There's something about Mary. You know what I mean? I got Mary. Who y'all got? So he's in. He's heading to a great season, Doug. The greatest season of his life. He's gonna get married. His family came. Her family agreed. He agreed. He's getting a young girl. She's a pretty girl. Boom, man. He's gonna have a great life together. You ready? Betrothed means it can't be broken except by a divorce, a letter of divorce. So let's just read the Bible, and then we'll talk about it. Is it okay? Everybody good? Uh, is it good so far? Are you learning something? Yeah. All right, let's go. So Matthew 1, verse 18. I never really paid attention to this. I'm going to be honest. Now, the birth of Jesus was as follows. After, all right, so after his mother was under contract, engaged to Joseph. She belonged to him. Come on, you with me? Stay with me. All right, I'm going to read it and we'll go. Before, the, before they came together means... Is there any, if you got kids, close their ears. Before they had been intimate and, and, and consummated anything. Are you with me? Nobody, nobody understands that no more because they don't wait, right? Come on. But Shane, they'd never been together. It says it right there. Before they came together, she was, uh, uh-oh. She was found with what? Let's read on. But while he thought about these things, uh-oh, Joseph just went from an amazing moment in his season to what? The most disappointing moment of the season. Come on, are you with me so far? Oh, my God, I was so excited Sunday, and all hell broke loose on Monday. Don't get mad. God's trying to transition you, and you don't even understand it. And what happens is you give up because you were feeling amazing, and God had promised you the beautiful bride, amen. You didn't understand what God was doing at the time. But God was up to something. I'll show you in a minute. Here we go. Then Joseph, her, what? Being a what? He was a good man, and he didn't want, he's like, you know what? He's saying, you know, I don't want to, you know, I like her. And everything. I love her. I love the family. So I'm just going to put her away secretly. 
See, a lot of y'all got some stuff. Come on, somebody. Y'all, that God's trying to use to get you to the next level that you're trying to put away secretly. I'm an event. I'm a man. I, I'm a father. I'm a mother. Oh, no. You don't, you don't think of yourself as highly as God sees you. You settle for the worst relationships. You so, settle for the worst jobs. You settle for everything that God, the enemy wants you. He, you. You settle for what the attorney promises you instead of using the power of the attorney, Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus. Ah, then Joseph, being a just man, because y'all are just, and you know what you want in your life, and you're just going to take care of it yourself. That's what Joseph was going to do. Biggest, big mistake. Watch what happened. Not wanting to make her a public example. People don't care today, but he don't want people to see her pregnant. They knew they weren't married, and people back then just didn't get pregnant before they got married. Don't get mad. Just tell them your facts. So he was minded to put her away. What does it say? Go to the next verse. Thank God. Some of y'all are going to think today about, some of y'all are thinking about leaving the church. Some of y'all think about leaving your marriage. Some of you are thinking about quitting your job. Some of you are thinking about quitting your position. Some of you are thinking about, hey amen, what am I going to do about my kids being gone? I'm going to tell you, you raise your kids so they can go raise their kids. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. You don't compromise in any area of your life. God's trying to take you to a new place. But while he thought about these things, uh-oh. So he started meditating on it. You better meditate on the word. An angel appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Come on. This is good. Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of what? The, come on, the Holy Spirit. Go 21. And this is where he got the name. And she shall bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will what? Save his people from their sins. Here we go. The woman he was promised to, the woman he was contracted to, who he had not been intimate with yet, was pregnant. What a dream destroyer that was for Joseph. Some of you are disappointed because maybe you weren't chosen for the, this role or that role or something else like that. that. That You not being chosen for that role was probably your promotion to the next level. The problem, here's what happens, Caressa, is that people... When they get disappointed, they shut down their hearing of what God is saying to them. They are listening when everything's going their way. Joseph got the woman. He's going his way. He's listening. Everything's going good. But when he found out she was pregnant, he shut it down. I'm going to put her away. How many of you had decided that you're going to shut something down in your life, amen, because something didn't go your way? And you shut down hearing the voice of God because... You don't want to hear it anymore. You're going to go, I'm just going to deal with it in the best way I can. That's what he was going to do, put her away. But what happened is, it was a dream destroyer. And it was, and, and like the Bible said, it's before they came together intimately, right? And no doubt that Joseph, just like a lot of us, looked forward to his marriage, just like I did. I was so excited. I could not wait to get, I know her mom said, hey, Linda, how you doing? I could not wait to go to Daytona Beach. Amen. Honeymoon, pop. Come on. Amen. I got the honeymoon, man. About th three days in, she was crying, wanting to go home. I was like, what's wrong? You're like, I miss my mom. <laughs> oh, well, we got a new address, son. I'm going to tell you. You can go see her anytime you want. Just don't go home. Don't go home. There was a season. She'd always been a mama's baby. I always hiding behind her mama. And all of a sudden, here she was in a new season of her life. Got this crazy guy. Amen. Come on different right but just like him he wanted to have that first baby he's like oh my god I, and i respect a lot of you people men have taken on marriages y'all got children for you and all that stuff and you the great fathers the great mother you guys are awesome all you ladies and men are awesome that do that and take hold of that and run that and i'm gonna tell you i compliment that you the daddy amen whatever you ain't this or that you ain't no step nothing amen you are who god says you are right i appreciate that so I, i'm not talking about any of that today but but just like he thought of having many children and living life with his bride. Now, how many of you felt this way? Now, oh my Lord, I've been doing all this, God. You promised me this. You gave me the very best. And now all of a sudden this happens. I can't believe you took this away from me. I can't believe you did this in my life. How many of you done that? That's what he was doing, right? Here's what it was. He was thinking this. 
Now, how in the world was this happening? Have you ever thought that? I have. Come on. How is this happening to me? Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all are lying. Why am I going through this relationship issue? Why am I going through this with my kids? Why am I going through this? I went through a lot of transitions and a lot of times, but you know what I'm going to tell you? When I allowed God to move in, every, in those situations and I trusted him, even when it was uncomfortable, even when it didn't feel good, even when I didn't like it, even when I was crying, even when I was upset, I trusted God to get through it. He got every time. The ones I messed up and failed in are the ones I tried to fix myself. Now here it is. He didn't even know who the father was. But he knew it wasn't him. Now, that was a very inconvenient shock to him, don't you think? And it came, how many of y'all, it was a very inconvenient shock to him. And it came in a very inconvenient time. Come on, everybody. Can I get an amen that every time, sometimes you get a shock right when you've already had three or four more shocks and you don't want another one? It came at an inconvenient time. Have you ever noticed when you can't pay one bill, four more try to chase you down? You ever got an unexpected bill? It comes in, you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Well, so you, uh, I, thank God I got money to take care of it. And then four more come in you didn't expect. Shock comes at inconvenient times. Is he still God? Is he still on the throne? Is he the same God that paid the bill last time? He's the same God that'll do it this time, right? So I'm sure he felt sick, lonely, and confused. Y'all ever been there? Can you imagine how Joseph felt? The, I don't know how long there was between those two verses, but how he felt before the Holy Spirit came in and told him, hey, don't worry, the Holy Spirit impregnated her. Now, a lot of us wouldn't believe that, right? Amen? But here it is. But what seemed, everybody say what seemed, what seemed like the end for you and what seemed like the end for Joseph was just the beginning. Amen? His current, everybody say my current, might not have been unplanned. Come on, say it. But to God, it was not unknown. So what, in other words, what you are going through right now may have been unplanned to you, but it was not unknown to God. God knew it all along. So everything you're going to be faith. You don't think God knew that night in Brussels that my bag was going to get lifted, amen? And that, that, you know why? I'm going to tell you, it, it had nothing to do with the devil. It had everything to do with God. Come on, watch this. Because God had been trying all week to get me to, I, I was trying to be, uh, how do you say it? Tiptoe nice to the Romanian people. And God didn't want, he wanted, not, let me rephrase that. You know, I was trying to be a little, you know, res respectful. to God said, you can be respectful, but you're going to listen to what I'm telling you to do, amen. So I'm going to take all your notes. I'm going to take everything you got, and then you'll preach what I told you to preach. It was, un it was inconvenient shock, because if any of y'all travel with me, you know I don't let nothing get by. I keep everything. I'm constantly asking you. Man, boom, you got it. Wasn't going to the devil. See, the crossroads came. Now, okay, now I'm in, I'm in an inconvenient situation. I've had a great week. I've been eating Belgian waffles. I've been touring. I was at the wedding. I spoke at the wedding day. I had a great time. And bam, something happened. It came at an inconvenient time at 11 o'clock at night. On a night that I got to go preach two services the next morning. Come on, somebody. Amen. That I planned messages. Right? Had everything. So I'm sitting in the room and I say something in the bed. I'm like, praise the Lord, what am I going to do? The Holy Spirit came just like he did to Joseph and said, hey, don't worry. I got a message for you. The Holy Spirit allowed what took place. Watch, don't get mad. To, not to get my attention, but I got to preach what God wanted me to preach. He wanted to see, am I going to fold? Come on. Am I going to fold in this season or am I going to take it by the horns and just let it rip? Yeah. My Lord, I, something shook up inside of me. Amen. It was inconvenient. It was a shock. I know what happened. But guess what? My Lord, I, my, I'm going to tell you, Joel, I'm a Joel, God bless Elder Joel. Amen. She, she, I, 
you know, she would tell you, great service. She was jumping up and down, all excited, amen, because the word of God went out that day, amen, in the Romanian church, and from the pastor down, the whole place broke. Hmm. So because of the inconvenient shock and the inconvenience of what I went through, the crossroads became a, battle, a battlefield, and through the crossroads, I enforce, and you got to enforce, the victory in the earth, amen, that God has given us so you can tell the devil, the attorney, that you don't need his help, that you got God Almighty. Amen. So, if you're in a situation right now, in a transition, facing the end of something or the beginning of something new, right? you got to look, I just said it. You've got to look at this thing you're going through as a crossroads, right? Everybody say a battlefield. When you face the end of one chapter of your life, and we've all faced different chapters. Come on, somebody. Right, Shane? Go read Shane's book. He's faced some chapters. Right? I ain't wrote a book yet, but I'm going to write one. You're going to see I went through some chapters, right? Amen? When we face the end, amen, and we begin the next one, it's often a instigator for a battle. You're going to go through it. I sat up all night, almost three hours that night until I finally got peace. Amen. You, it's an instigator. Sometimes, I hate to say how to say this. A lot of times crossroads are sent or they're there to instigate a battle to get you to the next level. You ought to catch that. Oh, ben, he don't like me no more. No, I'm instigating you so that I can challenge you to go to the next level. Well, you, you didn't communicate well. You know what? I'm going to tell you this. You're in the battlefield. You need to communicate with God. Change. You need to go to the next level. Amen? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to ask you this. Everybody say, transition can bring major resistance. Everybody say, time under tension. Right, Shane? Time under tension. It's not how fast we run through it. It's how properly we do the reps. Come on, somebody. It's not how fast I run through the message today. And rah, rah, y'all. Amen. It's that I get y'all under that. I'm, right now, I got y'all stepping up in weight. We done got some blood flowing in this place now. You're getting some attention now. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm taking you to the heavyweight stuff. Amen. Come on. We got to go to the next level. Amen. We got to know who we are in Jesus Christ. We got to understand that the battlefield and the pressure we're feeling is not coming from your pastor. It's coming from your life. Amen. And it's just an instigator for the battle that God wants you to go. He wants you to take it to the next level. You know, the devil's going to throw stumbling blocks. You don't think he is? He's going to throw stumbling blocks in your path. He's going to try to cut you off like them cars do, in the, in, in, like they were talking about last night. He's going to try to catch you off guard during times of transition. When you're flowing and running, man, he can't catch you. But you know what? During that season of transition, like Joseph was, he's about to get married. The enemy knew that Jesus was going to be born. So if he could talk Joseph out of this, he could start messing up the genealogy and all that kind of stuff, right? Come on. He wants, here it is. He wants to throw those things. He's hoping this. This is what the enemy's hoping. He's hoping, and so many people are, there's people disengaged from last week. They're empty seats. He's hoping that he can get you disengaged from your destiny, get you disengaged from who you really are, amen, to start feeling uncertain about what I'm saying to you, amen. And he'll try, that's how he busts up marriage. That's how he busts up marriage, amen. He tries to get both y'all disengaged, feeling uncertain about your marriage. Then he'll try to get you to quit. Just quit that church, go somewhere else. Then you got to start all over again, right? He wants, he don't care about you. He don't care about me. He, he wants to destroy your journey of faith, okay? And he wants to destroy that journey of faith. And at the crossroads of life, he wants to send you down the wrong road. Some of y'all have chosen the wrong road. I've chosen a few wrong roads, right? You got to turn around. Y'all depending on the earthly GPS to guide you through life and what people say and people punk. I'm going to tell you, nobody likes me half the time. But I don't care. It doesn't matter. Amen? 
People get intimidated. It doesn't matter. I'm in a crossroads. I got a next level anointing in my life, a next level calling in my life. I'm going to be who God called me to be. There's going to be disappointments. There's going to be times where I can come in here and, and do the greatest message in the world. There's going to be times where I come in here that ain't so good. You know what I mean? But guess what? I'm going to keep on going because, you know, what? sometimes that's just, a, that's, just a, that's, just a, that's just God nudging me, amen, to the next level. Ah. <laughs> uh. He wants to destroy your journey of faith and send you on the wrong road of life. He's trying to deceive you into thinking, ah, I've been here. He tries to deceive you into thinking you've reached the end of the road. You're done. You ain't a bishop no more. You're nothing. Go away. You're done. <laughs> so you did Jesus. You're done. Go away. Peter, you're done. Paul, you're done. Go away. Tries to deceive you and think you've reached the end of the road. How many of y'all felt that way? I have before. Let me raise both hands. In other words, he wants to seize, right, and stop your growth opportunities. He wants to take them. And then he wants to take what, what God's already given you. Some of y'all are so talented. You ever see people on Facebook shoot scriptures out? All day long, amen. They're, they're using them unproductively, amen. They were taught well, but let me, let me, let me explain. Let me explain. He wants to seize what you got, okay. Y'all have a little, some people got a lot of zeal, very little knowledge. Am I right, somebody? Okay, so what the enemy wants to do is seize that little bit of knowledge you got. He wants to stop your growth. Come on, somebody. Then he wants to turn what you know. Watch this. This is so important. You better catch it. He wants to take what you know and use it unproductively to drive other people away. I'm going to shoot a scripture out there to make me look like I, I got a little bit of knowledge. Amen. I'm going to shoot it out there and try to disrupt you from being a part of what God wants you to be a part of. You know, it happens all the time. Somebody told you not to come here, you know, years ago. The best decision you ever made to come here. Best decision you all ever made. And the best decision you'll ever make is to stay here till the day, amen, that we all leave. Don't get mad. Oh, you're just trying to keep me. No, I'm trying to help you get to the place you've got to go. And I'm telling you, this is like a marriage. It ain't going to be easy. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. You got people sitting in the bench next to you, amen. They're not like you. They ain't never going to be like you, amen. And they're not going to sing kumbaya with you, amen. You can't worry about what they're doing. Everybody says, well, this place ain't as loving as it should be. Well, are you as, are you as a lovey-dovey as you should be? You know what I'm saying? I'm in a battle. I'm in a crossroads. I'm either going to go back, wrong road, or next level. Never, no, no time did God tell any of you people in this house that it was going to be easy. I had a drink in 25 years. I had a smoke in 31 years. I'm telling you, nobody said life was going to be easy. So, he wants to seize what you got. Use it against you. Right? That's what he did with the devil. I mean, what the devil did with Jesus, he said he sees what little he knew of the word and he tried to use it against the Lord. Right? He can steal your salvation, but he can sure make you question your salvation and make, make you question your purpose in life. Amen? There's a lot of you today, oh, oh man, I used to be all oh, this. Well, well, you're at a crossroads. You don't even realize it. You're spinning it. You, you know, the famous thing now, in all, all the world is these stupid roundabouts. You know what I mean? I hate them. Give me a four-way stop. It's my turn. I go, you go. Amen. I, I can't, my, my mind can't comprehend all this shenanigans going on. Right? But a lot of y'all are in life. Y'all come to a crossroads that's got a roundabout, and y'all are going round and round and round in circle. You can't decide which way to go. Y'all like, wait, which way to go? You know, which way, the little Tweety Bird, which way did he go? Which way did he go, right? Where'd he go? Where'd I go? Where'd I go? <laughs> and GPS ain't caught up with half them roundabouts, so they definitely going to send you down. You, you start driving, you ever look at your GPS, and, and it don't show a road? You're like, that's where a lot of people are today. <laughs> they don't know. You know, you know, you drive, you're like, well, GPS says there ain't no road, but I know there's a road. Hey, sometimes 
the, your GPS in life, you're going to be traveling the road. You're going to look around and go, hey, it says there's no road, there is no hope, there is no way. But you look down and you're on the highway to heaven. Amen. Ah. Ah. Come on, somebody. Satan wants to end. This is good. He wants to end your spiritual experience. The media will not tell you, but there is a complete war against Christianity in the world right now. In Sri Lanka, they won't tell you. Come on, I feel like there's bombs dropping. He's trying to drop. You hear him dropping bombs on me? Amen. You had the light situation. I got bombs dropping up here. You hear him? Hear him? Bam. Hey, listen to this. But what I'm going to tell you, amen, in Sri Lanka, it was, it was an attack on Easter Sunday against Christianity and the believers of Jesus Christ, amen. It was anti-Jesus. Uh, anti and the world today is anti-Jesus. The devil is trying his best to separate you from your spiritual experience, right? He's trying to separate you from God. Turn, it's this thing right here. Somebody turn it off. Garrett, turn it off. He's shooting bombs at me. I'll, I'll take a water break. Is this good? Is it helping you? Praise the Lord. We'll shoot them. If, if another one acts up, we'll shoot it too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you ready? How many believe God's more powerful than the devil? You believe that? Oh, praise the Lord. My notes decided to go away. Say, that's okay. That's okay. Say, Bishop, you don't need no notes. Need no notes. Amen. Where'd I leave off? Here's a good thing. The good news is he can't separate us from God. Right? Are you with me? Who separates themselves from God? Say, I do. You do, right? How many know that God's more powerful than the devil? How many know that we got all of heaven backing us up and it's more powerful than the power in the earth, right? Whenever you feel like you've reached the end of things and you can't keep going, right? You know what it really is? Everybody say it's a temporary illusion. I talked to Shane about this on the mountain the other day. It's a temporary illusion of deception that the devil's trying to maintain in your life. Ain't that good? Huh? Here it is. I can walk, you know, a baby, you put this over their head, and they don't see nobody. And then they look up, and they go, oh, man. Right? Deception is just like this. I know I'm here, and I know there's a lot of people here, but I don't see them. So they must not be here. That's what deception is. And then when it's pulled off, you're like, oh, my Lord, there's a lot of people in this place. Right? That's the way it is. You walk around. Everybody around you sees it. Everybody else knows what's going on. But you walking around like this. You're like, why are they doing that? You know, they're going through this situation. You're like, you see them going to one bad thing and another bad thing and all this kind of stuff. And you know they got a call in your life. You know God didn't lie to you and tell you they didn't have a call in your life. But they're walking around with deceptive minds and deceptive spirits. Like, and I'm going to tell you, a believer that thinks everybody's out to get them has got a problem, somebody. That's the devil trying to tell you that. I in the church ain't a bunch of hypocrites. That's the voice of the devil. Y'all go to work with hypocrites every day. Liars, cheaters. How many of y'all hang out with people at work? Not many of y'all. Right? You still go to work, don't you? It's a temporary illusion of deception that the devil's trying to maintain in your life. The longer he can keep this over your head is the longer he can control you. Right? And I know it's challenging. It is. It's challenging as that sounds and as it is, right? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. If you want to continue, how many of y'all want to continue? Living a life full of momentum. That's why people say, I don't want you talking about your things. You know, I ain't going to say it. I want you talking about the go ye. I'm going to talk about it till the day I die. If you don't like it, so be it. I'm going to talk about salvation till the day, till the day I die. I'm going to talk about being filled with the Holy Ghost today. I'm going to talk about grace till I die. I'm going to talk about faith till I die. Amen. Even if it's bad season, good season, I don't care. I don't care what kind of season. Georgia could go 1 in 11. Amen. I'm still a Georgia Bulldog fan, right? I'm a Braves fan. I was at the Braves games when you could buy a ticket, amen, for three bucks and go sit wherever you wanted. Everybody says, oh, are you just saying that? I could do it. I'd go to Falcon games, amen, have, be empty, and I still am a Falcon fan no matter what. I'm still a Jesus fan no matter what I'm going through. 
I don't like Bishop Tim. You better be a fan of Jesus even if you ain't a fan of me, right? So, you all want to live a life full of momentum. Keep the momentum you got, right? Because I've seen a lot of y'all start out with a lot of momentum, but it's very obviously that we've hit the crossroads. And you're in the roundabout, and you don't know where to get off. You've got to get off at the next level. Not last season's promises. Not what you did in IBTC. Not what you did in your past marriages. You've got to get to the next level, right? Okay. Then you must see God in the end of things, right? So no matter what I'm going through, I know God is going to be in this, right? So I knew God... When I got lifted, the bag got lifted, I knew that God would be with me. No, even though Tyler went to basic training, I knew God would get me through it, right? I motivated myself by giving him care boxes. Remember me sending him care boxes? With two, I went to Walgreens every week and bought a shoe box. I had shoe boxes, and I would load that sucker up with cough drops. Come on. I remember cough drops. Amen. Whatever you can have, I would look. Because cough drops were like candy to soldiers, right? I'd send him bags of that. I'd send all kind of toiletries, any of this stuff to make you degree, remember degree. I send everything I could. Amen. That motivated me to the day I could see him again. You got to find something. I don't want to go to church Sunday morning. I don't want to wash cars. My Lord, that could have been your season to lead you to the next level. Y'all think I want to be here at 7 o'clock yesterday morning? But you know what? I was so, I was so, on, I don't even know how they contained me yesterday. I felt so good at 6.50 in the morning. I got here with nobody here. And I was rejoicing in the Lord. I was like, I, I was like, you know, I was at a crossroad because wasn't nobody here. Come on, listen to me. And usually I would just get frustrated and say, these people, God, you gave me. The... I did something different. I did something different. I did something different. I started rejoicing. God, and then something said, just pull your truck around and start washing it. I said, but God, ain't no soap. He goes, you don't need soap. This ain't about soap. It ain't about this. It's about you. It's about trying to tell you. I felt so good. I was told people were coming up. They're all, some of them are, you know, a little weary, you know, and some of them are a little, you know, a little sleepy. Amen. I was like, I am wired. I am happy. I, and they were like, oh, Lord, we got four. I was like, bring on more cars. Bring more cars. I was driving them nuts. But I wanted to get to the next level. You understand? It felt good. Do you understand? Didn't it feel good? What you did last week, didn't it feel good? Amy, what you did last week, didn't it feel, didn't it feel good what you did? Amen. You know, nobody told you. You came to a crossroads. You came to a crossroads. I could circle around it. I might need this. I might want to hold it. I might want to build a bigger barn. No, I think I'll just go to the next level. Hmm. Man. People never cease to amaze me in the positive way. I'm just in awe. And then I drove up yesterday morning, and I got to see this, this glowing orange thing. Y'all say, well, that was the sun, Bishop. No, 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 no. I've seen something different. If you drive up on this property and you don't see what I see, then there's something wrong. You're going in circles. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, it ain't over. Till God says it's over. Just because you lose something that you love, just because a chapter of your life ended suddenly, it doesn't mean your life or your calling or your ministry or your job or your marriage is over. Come on, somebody. Amazes me. Holy Ghost, strong, man, powerful people. Quit. Breaks my heart. I don't know. Y'all must have had the same DNA I got. Heavenly DNA. Because something inside of me makes me just know I'm not going to quit. You think I, you ask my boys, there are two of them here today. I never once, through all their shenanigans and through their good times and their bad times, did I ever tell them that, hey, all hope is lost. It's over. You're doomed. No, I did not do that. I said, it's just an opportunity to get to your next level. Encourage, equip, empower. You know who we're supposed to be? And it certainly doesn't mean, and I'm trying to, Serena, start thinking about it coming up. And seeing something powerful. And it certainly, because I question this, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It certainly doesn't mean that God has left you during this crossroad. Y'all left him. 
He never left you. He's trying. <laughs> he, 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 do you think Moses, do you think Paul in some of their trials, do you think every day was easy to them? There were days, amen, when they seen, you know, silver and gold have I none, but there were days when they were getting beat. Amen. There were days when they were having a great day preaching, they got thrown in jail. That was an inconvenient shock at an inconvenient time, wouldn't you think? Come on, somebody. John the Baptist, he comes, pays way for Jesus Christ, but he gets beheaded. Right? That's probably a shock to him at the time. Amen. Just cause you a, that chapter, that chapter, or a chapter of your life ended suddenly doesn't mean your life is over. Do you agree? I've had to close a lot of chapters in my life. Amen. But I'm not done. I feel better now physically and spiritually now than I ever have in my life. I'm more in tune with the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't get mad if I brag. I'm going to brag about Jesus. I'm more in tune with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that I don't have inconvenient shocks come to my life at times. In inconvenient times that just don't work for me. That I gotta, I gotta go through. God taught me again on this trip. It, it ain't about you, brother. You gonna have some, you gonna have some inconvenient times in your life that you gotta get through. Started on that Wednesday night. You know, I feel like I was competing with the, you know, the old way. But God said, you know what? Now I'm trying to grow you. I'm trying to teach you. This is what you're gonna combat. I've called you to combat this stuff. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna teach. You're gonna help guide these people to a new place. The anointing that is inside of you, I'm leading you to a new level. It ain't always gonna be rah rah on the mission field, amen, where people are getting saved and throwing bodies up on the stage. There's gonna be times where you gotta get in and you gotta go to work. Every day ain't gonna be smooth. Y'all quit when you have one bad five minutes. Somebody don't like you, or they get you get an innuendo on Facebook. Boy, y'all never get innuendos. Why don't you just say what you mean and mean what you say? I hate you. <laughs> I respect you more if you just said it. I've had people tell me I don't like you. Well, I love you anyway. Praise the Lord. I don't like the way you preach. Well, good. Praise the Lord. We had this meeting one time. I'll tell you a story. And I had a bunch of young people at Walnut Grove. Sabrina was there. She was young. And you're young now, Stu. You were real young then. And you probably remember, went to a church, and we, uh, you know, our girls, I didn't make our girls wear dresses. Come on, somebody. Our young girls, and they were dressed appropriately, but we had a singing. They, they, and I had to preach at night. Literally, the place erupted in Pentecost. I'll tell you the church later. Erupted. People were getting saved. We laid hands on people. You know, I don't think they fell out because they didn't really know what it was. But they, if, they, if, they knew, if they understood, they would have. Amen. It was so powerful. The kids blew the place apart. And then we brought the word home, right? I get in. Everybody's all happy. People are going crazy. They're all excited. And these, you know, you can see them when they're coming. Man, you're feeling good. I feel good, man. I got people going, man, bitch. Or they call me, they call me Brother Tim. Brother Tim, that's the best service I've ever been in. That's the greatest youth group I've ever seen. They were coming down the line while, you know, we used to stay in the Baptist church. At the end of the church, we'd be shaking everybody's hand. We'd be getting our pat on our back. We'd be feeling good. All of a sudden, here comes the posse. Posse. The pastor. And his posse. Ties. Shoes. Belts. Button up. He's at the end of the line. I was like, they're going to come over here and tell me how great I was. Man, praise the Lord. He goes, you was great. Brother Tim, you was great. They didn't look like they were going to say I was great, though. Give me, I think there was four of them. Give me four men. Come on, Doug. Come on, Lee. Come on, Tyler. Who else? Come on, James. What are you doing way back there? Get over here. So here I am, praise the Lord. I'm feeling good. Everybody. I, was, I was excited, man. I was like, these people love me here, man. Come on. Here he come. Pastor's, pastor's in here. He shakes my hand, and he says, I cannot believe you allow your young people to dress this way. I said, well, praise the Lord, man. Go, next guy. You will never be here again. Next guy. I can't believe you allow that to go on. And the next guy didn't say a word. I'm like, I'm young too, man. I'm back. This is, I'm like 50 years old. Y'all sit down. 
listen. Let me think of what year that was. 2001 or two. So I was 34, 35, 36, somewhere around there. And I was devastated. Shane, can you imagine? Young preacher, you go somewhere else for the first time. You haven't been there in a long, you never really been outside too much. I went to some friendly churches that were down with it. But I never really released. And you know what it did? I had to make a decision. I was like, oh my God. I'm never going to get to preach at these churches again. None of them. They were basically saying, you need to straighten this up or you'll never be here again. Well, thank God I didn't straighten up. <laughs> I guarantee you, that church is the same number it was when I left it. I wasn't a pastor there. Don't get, no, don't get and I'm not talking bad about the church, please. But you understand, that was, if you put yourself in my shoes, my wife's shoes, inconvenient shock. She brought something out to my memory yesterday, too, when I was writing this message. We did a revival somewhere. Well, the pastor had invited me. He heard about me. So he invites me, right? If you invite me, what are you going to get? And you tell me, hey, and the pastor comes up to me. He didn't know what he was saying. I'm going to tell you. He just heard of me, I guess. He shook my hand. Tyler, he said, just do what the Lord tells you. I was like, okay, I got permission to do what the Lord tells me to do. <laughs> Pentecost broke out. Ah, yeah. You probably were with me during that. Pentecost broke out. Those same men, they weren't the same men, but the same men must have approached that pastor that night. The next night I show up, I'm excited, Doug. I'm feeling so good. I'm like, wow, I blew that plate. But come on, Holy Ghost, we blew it up. <laughs> Sit down, pastor says, come on, I need to talk to you. I'm excited. Man, it was good last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, hey. He said, you look really tired. He said, you know, he goes, you know, once you just take tonight and tomorrow off, and then you can. Hmm. I said, no, I think God called me here. I said, did God tell you to call me to do this revival? Uh, I said, did he? He said, yeah. I said, I intend on finishing what God sent me here to do, unless you decide to stop me. So what was he going to say? Preach that night, lights go out. I keep preaching. Y'all know me. Pitch black. We didn't have all this stuff. Pitch black. I'm still letting it rip. Amen? Turn on. <laughs> I going to love this. God is my witness. I'm telling the truth. I, if y'all were there. Anybody know what happened when the lights came on? People were being attacked by wasp. I, 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 the lights came on, and wasps were flying around people's heads. They were shoom, shoom, shoom. I kept on preaching, amen? And I preached that whole week. I ain't never been back. But I'm going to tell you this. We had so many people get born again. So many people get saved and delivered that week, amen? Pharaoh sent his walls. And it's still, it was the inconvenient shock and the inconvenient time. But guess what? I'm still here. And you're still here, right? I'm almost done. See, Sabrina, I told you almost. So God never left you for a second. Say that. You believe that? As hard as it is sometimes, right? When you get shocking news or you lost a loved one or you lost your job or you got some terrible's happened, right? Let me, let me promise you something. If you believe with me and you stand in agreement with the Word of God, your best days are yet to come. And I'm going to tell you, if you will take what's going on right now, your doubt, your insecurity, and everything that's going in through your mind uh, when you walked in this place today, and you said, hey, I just figured that out. Bishop just told me that's a crossroads. That's the devil trying to talk me out of going to the next level. I'm just going to trust what God is saying, and I'm going to elevate, and I'm going to take this as an instigator for a battle, and I'm about to go beat this thing. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I could have quit. I was a young minister. I, I, I remember Stacy didn't want to go back. She cried. She said, please, let's don't go back. Please, just don't go. They don't want you there. I said, no, I'm going. No, 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 no. It's the instigator for battle, right? Yeah. Come on, somebody. It's time to fight. I'm not talking about no rear way. Come on, it's time to go. We're going to quit. We're going to give in. I don't you sing too loud. Praise the Lord, sing louder. I'd sing louder. You know, pray. I'll sing louder. You, you too wild. I'll get wilder. You shouldn't do baptisms that way. I'll come to the next one. I don't like the way you do communions. I've heard all that stuff. Come on. Right? What does it matter? 
I'm not going to sit. I'm going to tell you this. Y'all can do it if you want to. Go around like, y'all don't remember this. If you're a Braves fan, this guy named Pasquale Perez, he, he just had got signed for the Braves. And Doug, he didn't know how to get off 285. He got on 285, but he didn't know how to get off at Capitol Avenue and go to the stadium, right? He passed it 20 times probably. He missed his start that night driving in circles around 285. I'm going to tell you this. I may die. Amen. But I ain't going to die outside the city. Amen. I'm going to die doing what God told me to do. Amen. I'm not going to die in the middle of a roundabout. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. I'll die on the way to the next level that God's got for me. Stand to your feet. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Get a song. And I'm going to tell you that today. If you're offended, praise the Lord. Meet those four guys you've seen earlier and talk to them. Don't talk to me, amen? Because I believe in you and I believe in your next level and I believe what you're going through is just an instigator, amen, to get you to go to the next level. I feel beat up in my marriage. Man, get off that, get off that circle. Amen? Get off the spiral. Life has been dealing with me some bad blows. I'm going to be honest with you. You had some bad blows, hadn't you? Amen. What'd you do? You can sit on the spit. You can sit on the little wheel, or you can get off the wheel, right? You know, I, I no. I think I think I'll just come out of this hospital, amen. Because I I found out this was the, what'd you do when you came to the crossroads and everything was like this, amen. You said no. I think I'll just go ahead and worship my way to the next level. The next level brought her to speaking on Christmas Day, speaking in front of thousands of people that night. Now it's going to take her to Africa. Oh, and many more places beyond that. I stood aside. I went, my, their family was over here. I walked, I walked over here to watch. You know, there were thousands of people there. But all I seen was God. I said, boy, any good. God said, through everything, you think, you know what he told me? He said, you think you've been through some stuff. He said, yeah, she's been through some stuff. She was saying names of stuff she'd been through and overcame battles. You know, it's like somebody said, I was in Nam, man. I was in Korea. Man, she was in some stuff a whole lot worse than that. She was fighting, what's the name of that thing? How you say it? That disease, what those diseases, those things that I don't want to give them. But you were fighting those names you were saying. And she could either let them consume her or take it as an instigation to go to the next level. You remember when you were naming off the, how you came through those things? Those were like, I was in World War II. I was in Korea. I was in Nam, man. I came out of it. Here I am. I'm a little crazier for it, but I'm here. I've been through the battles, haven't you? We've been through those things of life. Always sing. Come on. God's here.